Now this may not be a water to suit everybody. For me, this is a gem. I love a well-established waters. Casting can be a bit tricky at times, but it has been well thought out as regarding the back cast and the removal of certain trees. There are a total of six lakes, three coarse lakes and three trout lakes. It is stocked on a regular basis and with a good few doubles. And what they have in the water is everything from rainbows, browns, tigers and blues. But what really impresses me is the amount of work Graham the fishery owner and his team have put into this water. With all that's going on around the margins and those trees, the maintenance is massive. I'm sure he would be quite delighted that his water is of this size and not two or three times larger. So Justin and myself have arranged to meet up on this water. On arrival, Justin sets off fishing and I've decided to have a walkabout. An hour or so later, I'm catching up with him. But as I approach, he's into a fish. But this wasn't his first fish. This is his third fish. He did tell me that he was going to start on the floating line. But he soon switched to the intermediate, thinking that the floater was a bit too slow. And he's fishing a two-fly cast. On the point, he's got a weighted daddy and a red the alba on the dropper. Okay. Good stamp, isn't it? Yeah. He's in a good neck. Good tail on it too. Yeah. There we are. Okay, so going with the intermediate on a water like this can make a lot of sense. Being that it's a smaller water, it may well see a lot of lines. And that line flash can sometimes put the fish down. But what I have noticed is a few fish moving on the top. But what I've also noticed is that there's a fair few fish fry in here. And every now and again you'll notice a bow wave as the fish chases the pin fry. So I've opted to stick with the floating line. I'm going with the single fly and I'm going to do what I normally always do. Move the pattern a bit quicker to start and work my way down. Slowing it up as I go. Okay, you might be wondering, why would I go on to the floating line? If Justin's already done a bit of floating line and he then switches to the intermediate and finding that to be better. For me, the fishing is more about the enjoyment. Okay, we want to catch fish, but everybody will have a preferred method as to how they go about it. Mine is always going to be the floating line. But apart from that, with Justin fishing the intermediate and me on the floater, it means we're going to find out a bit more about the water and the fish. And who knows, within half an hour or so, as the sun gets higher in the sky, then fish could be moving more onto the floater. Okay, not too long. Just in into another fish. Not a problem, the sun isn't up enough yet. <laughs> okay, so Justin's in again. What he's doing, he's picking them up more on the red dial, which is on the dropper. So it suggests to me, even though he's on a slower intermediate yeah. line, that the fish ain't too far down. The retrieve he's using is varied. So I have already switched to the red dial, just to see if I can get a response from the fish. And the idea now is to start slowing it down and get the fly a little bit deeper. To do this, in this ripple, I've just got to make a few more mends. Okay, not too long after, and I'm switching the pattern again. The red dowel is more of Justin's pattern. It's one of his favourites. But it's not mine, so I'm switching it for the squirrel. Now, I'm sure that there is going to be a lot of patterns that are going to pick up fish on this water today. But picking a pattern that gives you more confidence is the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> My squirrel.
Okay, I'm going to be switching the pattern again. For the same thing, the only difference is this squirrel has got a bit of lead wire in it, so that's going to help me get down a little bit more. I've just noticed Justin seems to be paying more attention to the reeds on his left. He's not putting me cast out that way, but he's certainly focusing on it a lot. Now, whether he's seen something moving there. Oh, here he goes. There's definitely something going on there, the way that he's looking at it. I bet he pulls the fish from there. Unbelievable. Do you know, I clocked that. It was no more than a minute and a half. Just in again. Same pattern, is it? Huh? Same pattern. Same fly. A black girl back as well, not the rest, been on the red. Yeah. That wheel of yours gives a serious flat. Does it? Yeah, but I'm watching it on the water. Ah, that's probably what it is. Okay, so Justin's just picked up a problem that I've got. And it's the amount of light that's reflecting off my reel. It's bouncing onto the water and from his perspective it's at about 20 foot. So this could spook the fish. But it's not just reels that reflect light. The rod can also reflect light. But as we're fishing more closer quarters, this can be an issue. And for the amount of casting that I'm doing, that's a lot of flash. I'm not saying that this is going to be the reason as to why I'm not picking fish up, but it certainly ain't going to help. Hey, ain't you lucky? Huh? Ain't you lucky? Why? I'm scaring them up there with the flashy reel. Okay, I'll turn it sideways. Bloody hell. I'm going to put some dirt on it. Flash it about 20 feet in front here. Shit. So we're gonna do now, we're gonna have a quick break, quick cup of tea. Uh, I may consider switching, going on to the intermediate. I've got a couple of patterns, but I haven't tried any lures or anything like that yet. But this, being that it's small water, it sees a lot of lines on the water, a lot of different patterns. I'm sure they've seen plenty of lures. Okay, so I've decided to give the bottom lake a bit of a rest. So I've headed up here to the top lake, and what they stock in here is mainly tigers. The water here is a bit more coloured. So what I've decided, I'm going to stick with the floater. I'm putting on a... I'm going through a few lures, actually. Uh, I've got my aladine on. Now I do know this pattern does pick up fish in coloured water, it's obviously bulky, it's got a bigger silhouette and it's got a bit of colour in there. So I'm going to give that a go. And the rain is starting to come down. Okay, so the colour on this water at the moment is more down to the amount of rainfall we've been having. But Justin does say it's worth giving this a go. As he says, the tigers in here are stunning and really hard fighting. But I'd say we've got to be a bit patient if we're doing this. The good thing is that it's a smaller water and you can cover it quite quickly. Now when I say cover the water quickly, I don't actually mean to retrieve quickly. When the water's as coloured as this, I would suggest that you move the pattern a lot slower. Well if that fails, then why not try a faster retrieve? Okay, after about three quarters of an hour, I'd had nothing, but I got really close. As I was fishing the hang, the tiger came up and turned off last minute. But I'm not going to be too bothered about it. My intentions are to come back and visit this water. And who knows, the colour on the water then could be a lot better. And it'll improve my chances. Oh, good, a fish. 
Fish for the baby hun. <laughs> fish for fish. Okay, so I'm back on the bottom lake, but this time I'm fishing more in the shade. I'm trying to avoid any of that glare coming off my reel. I'm still on the floating line, but what I'm going to do is slow it right up and wait for the pole. They've got wolves up here. Come on, fish! <laughs> fish are over there, John. <laughs> I know why you're wearing wellies. <laughs> <laughs> He knows what these are. These are the novice fish, the beginners. <laughs> That's why he tucked right in close. He's in the shallows, not allowed out there. Okay, so I've set up the intermediate rod in the ready. I've decided to give that a bit of a go towards the end of the session. But I've had a bit of inspiration. Right across the lake from us is two of the regulars, one of which is Kevin on the left. Now he's fishing on the floating line, longer tippet, but he's fishing with his version of the weighted daddy. He's fishing it dead slow, almost static. And he's had a couple of fish, and he's into another one again. Mind I did forget to ask him if he had a black reel. So I thought I would fish on with the floater just a little bit longer. But it didn't last. I've gone all day without hitting the trees, but it's going to happen at some point. But that's now my introduction to the intermediate. And what is about to happen is unbelievable. And that was actually the first cast. But this also is short lived as the fish came off. So you're probably sat there now thinking to yourselves, I would have been on the intermediate ages ago. The guy must be crazy. But here's the difference. I actually do a hell of a lot of fishing. And if I was going to the go to method every time, I think, think I'd be a little bit bored of it really. So what I do is I set myself these challenges. I make it a bit more interesting. To give you an idea, I've just done seven days solid fishing and I'm going to do another two. I will do this every so often, but I put in a lot more time fishing than most. So I can afford to just mess around. Whether it's coming up with something different, as in the fly, such as the cling film or the new lure, stripping a buzzer, or even fishing with the one foot tippet. These are the sort of things I enjoy doing. But I'm not the only one that does this sort of thing. A few of the boys do. Justin, he's decided not to fish with lures for a whole season. So he's been doing this now for about 9 or 10 months. Most of the patterns he's fishing are the likes of the Dialback, Buzzers and Nymphs. And quite often, he'd be aware of the go-to method and tell me that he's going to do something totally different. And his catch rate appears to be much the same. But what's more important, he's really enjoying it. Now when it comes to thinking outside the box, Steve's your man. Mostly everything he does is outside the box. But one of the things that he has done over the last 11 or 12 months is switching from fluorocarb back to mono. 
And the surprising thing is, his catch rate is actually increased. We've got a few ideas about this, but at some point we will go through this with you. So how often would you say to yourself at the end of the day, I actually thought about it, but I didn't actually try it? Okay, a few casts later and I get a knock. But if you keep watching towards the rod tip, you'll notice there's a big bow wave. I could have poked that fish's eye out with my rod tip, it was that close. But what it's doing is chasing fry in the margins. So this has prompted me to make another fly change. And what I'm doing, I'm putting on my black lure. Now this pattern, I haven't used this for quite some time. And when I was using it, it's caught a lot of fish. So I'm very confident that this can do it. And what I'm going to do is just concentrate on the margins. Okay, that was my second cast. It didn't look much, but the fish actually snapped me. Okay, that could be as much my own fault. I know in coloured waters, the fish will often take quite aggressively. And this is more down to the fish's sight. Knowing that if it loses track of whatever it's after, it can lose it for good. But what I've done, I'm pointing the rod directly down the line. So any hard contact is straight to the hand. Whereas if I would have kept the rod slightly to the side, I could have had a bit of give in the rod tip. Okay, so back to tying on another one of the same. So this pattern over the time has caught a lot of fish. If anything, it's probably one of my more consistent patterns. It may look like a lot of other patterns already out there, but it's how it's tied. Now, if you're interested to find out how it's tied, make sure that you click on the thumb at the end of this video. It may not be the best fly tying video out there, but it does demonstrate how I fish it and how I tie it. Okay, every now and then you can hook into something really big. Like this tree. Prior to hooking the tree, it probably made about two or three casts. But worse than that, that was the last of my black lure. Okay, that was, for me, really enjoyable. It's a stunning location. The water is just amazing. These are the sort of waters I really do enjoy. And if the fishing isn't on it, there's so much to see, you know, to, to view. But Justin was really on it today. He was fishing the intermediate. I stuck with the floater. As I say, first time on this water for me. Absolutely loved it, learned a lot. <laughs> I think next time, obviously, I'll always start with the floater and work my way down and then on to the intermediate. But I had put the intermediate on and it certainly did make a difference. I got snapped off. Uh, had a couple of knocks follow uh, and had one that come off um, so that did work oh and I caught two really big trees if you come up here and you don't hook a tree in a day then you're not doing very well yeah thoroughly enjoyed it can't wait to come back absolutely stunning water hope you enjoyed the video until the next one take care